You're watching Tag TV. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. From Kashmir to Kanyakumari, India has a spellbinding mosaic of culture, tradition, languages and an extraordinary mingling civilization. Keeping its age-old culture maintained, today the country is taking huge strides in the path of development. Hello, I'm your host Karim Zimik and today in our episode of My India, we bring you some of the stories that will give you a glimpse of our country's diversity. India is abundant with a number of different arts and craft forms that very well showcase the culture and everyday lifestyles of its people. A number of exhibitions are organized all over the country to promote these art forms and bring locals closer to their roots. One such exhibition was recently organized in Bhubaneswar city of Odisha where traditional folk and tribal artworks were showcased. It is the gift for an artist to be able to express emotions by spilling colors on a canvas and bring about a difference through it. Such impactful tribal paintings giving the message of our very existence and highlighting our association with each other were at display at an international exhibition in Bhubaneswar city of Orisha. Organized by Orisha State Museum in collaboration with Purvasha Folk and Tribal Art Museum, the exhibition showcased a wide variety of art pieces of a number of artists. The main motive behind this exhibition was to highlight traditional tribal folk art forms and educate the younger generation about it. It's a very good uh, platform uh, for, uh, and a very good exposure for them because I think uh, a lot of people or the, uh, the general uh, public are not aware of uh, the tribal art forms and the tribal dance. So I think this is a very good opportunity and a very good initiative by the government. I hope it attracts uh, big crowds because the people should see it, especially the younger generation should be aware of uh, what is happening or uh, what the, you know, the Indian folk art or the yes, Asian art has to offer. The exhibition featured around 100 artwork pieces of renowned artists from seven different countries including India, Indonesia, Korea and Nepal. Held under the theme Symbiotic Relationship, the exhibition highlighted the collaborative relationship between two or more species that are biologically and mutually affected by each other. Due to the coronavirus pandemic, artists from other Asian countries sent their selected artworks through courier or post. Explaining the relationship between humans and Mother Nature, the exhibition highlighted global issues and gave the message of conserving our forests through beautiful and vibrant tribal painting. The exhibition theme is the symbiotic relationship of human and nature. जो ह्यूमन और नेचर ह्यूमन के साथ जो नेचर का रिलेशनशिप है नेचर के साथ जो एनिमल्स का रिलेशनशिप है वही रिलेशनशिप को लेके ही ये पेंटिंग्स अभी डिस्प्ले यहाँ पे हुआ है और जितना भी फॉरेन से पेंटिंग्स आया है वो सब को थ्रो कॉरियर ही हम हमारे पास आया था और हम लोग इसको यहाँ पे एग्जिबिट किए हैं in order to provide more highlights of the life of tribals in Orisha, a colorful dance and music performance was organized, which was a treat to the audience. This exhibition ko aur thoda chhekdar aur thoda romantic banane ke liye iske saath live performance bhi ham log ka chal raha hai, jahan pe ham log ka Odisha ka jo folk culture, folk music jo hai, uska live performance bhi chal raha hai, jisme ki daska thiya, khanjuni, ghoda nacho, jo ki choyti ghoda hota hai, ham log ka Odisha ka ghoda nacho, matlab horse dance jo hota hai, wo hota hai, uske saath ham log ka एक कैंडरा होता है, कैंडरा प्ले होता है, और जोड़ी मोहरी ये ऑनलाइन मतलब यहाँ पे लाइव परफॉर्मेंस चल रहा है। After being at display in Bhubaneswar, Odisha, these paintings will be showcased at Delhi Craft Counselling Museum.
It is due to exhibitions like these that younger generation get to learn about their culture and heritage and stay connected to their roots. India has over the years set a perfect example of harmonious coexistence between different religious communities. Several acts of kindness could be seen in every nook and corner of the country that symbolizes the religious coexistence between these communities. Recently, some members of Muslim community in Faizabad made contribution for the construction of Ram Temple in Ayodhya. These Muslim members of Faizabad are cheerfully and proudly showing their contribution coupons. Their donation has not only contributed to the construction of a holy temple, but has contributed to a much greater cause, humanity. In a gesture aimed at communal amity, Muslim residents donated with open hearts through Nidhi Samarpana Abhiyan in Faizabad city. Bhagwan Ram, Ham Sab Kahai. Ram Mandir, Ham Sab Kahai. Or Ram Mandir. बनने में हम सभी मुसलमान सहयोग करें और ज्यादा से ज्यादा तादाद में सहयोग करें बाबर और मुगल ने जो यहां किया वो ठीक नहीं किया राम जी की मिसाल है राम जी की मिसाल है जो उन्होंने दुनिया में एक सबक दिया वो काबिल तारीफ है बाबर और ये तुम्हारे मुगल ये आवाम के साथ अच्छा सुलूक नहीं किया ये काबिल तारीफ के लायक नहीं राम जी हमारे राम जी हमारे हिंदुस्तान के थे हम भी हिंदुस्तानी हैं राम जी हमारे हिंदुस्तान के थे हम भी हिंदुस्तानी हैं हम लोग राम जी के वंश हैं हम लोग आपस में एक ही हैं एक ही नस्ल के हैं Contributions have been made earlier also by people of different religious communities as a show of their religious amiability. This is a example for the whole country and the whole country. What is it? This is a share of this moment. You don't teach the culture. You keep it outside. We are a Hindu. We are our Hindus. For the Ram Mandir, people who have come to the Ram Mandir, for the Ram Mandir, for the Ram Mandir, on the other hand, Muslim women are also raising funds for the construction of the temple to provide their share to the cause. हम सभी चाहते हैं कि देश में जो है फसाद को खत्म किया जाए और अमन कायम हो और जिन लोगों ने जिन लोगों ने हिंदुस्तान में आकर गलती की है उसको सुधारा जाए किसी भी धर्म में चाहे वो हिंदू धर्म हो या मुस्लिम धर्म हो किसी का हक मारना और किसी को परेशान करना नहीं सिखाया जाता है एक्ट्स ऑफ डोनेटिंग अक्रॉस रिलीजियस लाइन्स डिफाइन इंडिया स्पिरिट ऑफ सोशल हार्मनी एंड प्रूव दैट सेक्युलरिज्म इज डीपली रूटेड इन द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ यूनिवर्सल एक्सेप्टेंस एंड रेस्पेक्ट फॉर ऑल ट्रेडिशंस एंड ऑल डिनोमिनेशंस नाउ अ राउंड अप ऑफ सम ऑफ द मेजर स्टोरीज दैट वी मेड न्यूज़ रिसेंटली Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi was inoculated with the first dose of a homegrown coronavirus vaccine, kicking off an expansion of country's immunization campaign that began in mid-January with healthcare workers. People above 60 and those who are 45 or more and suffering from certain medical conditions are now eligible for the vaccinations. India, which has reported the highest number of COVID-19 cases in the world after the United States, has so far vaccinated more than 12 million health and frontline workers. Remarkable how our doctors and scientists have worked in quick time to strengthen the global fight against COVID-19, Modi said on Twitter. Meanwhile, Bharat Biotech's homegrown vaccine has shown an interim efficacy of 81% in late-stage trials, according to the company. Indigenous Horses Society of India organized a horse show specifically meant for domestic breeds in southern Coimbatore city. More than 60 horses participated in the show which was a hit among the children who got to ride on them, jump hurdles and witness a number of stunts. Vice President of Indigenous Horses Society of India, Raghavendra Singh said they were hoping to take these indigenous breeds into sports with civilians as a next step. It is very encouraging to see that 
the Marwadi horse, the indigenous horses, I would say, have found a place in the south of India once again. Of course, the horses were in this area, but now we are back in this area, which is very encouraging. This show, of course, is for the breeds. It is the items here, the events here are mainly to do with stallion, fillies, colts of the breed. That is of the confirmation of the horse, how well are you breeding this horse, which is quite an important factor. But our next step uh, is to go into sports. The horses of Indian military and paramilitary already participate in equestrian sports, but large civilian population of India largely remains eluded. A colonial era church in southern India marked its 150th anniversary of establishment by releasing pigeons, 150 balloons and distributing saplings. The CSI All Souls Church is one of the oldest Anglican chapels in India which was built by Brits stationed in the area in the year 1872 under English statesman Warren Hastings. On January 27th, it was consecrated by Bishop Jell for the glory of God. And it is now 150 years and we are continuing to celebrate and this is providing great spiritual nourishment for the people for the Christian community in Coimbatore. Strategically located because of revolts from neighboring rulers like Tipu Sultan and Haider Ali, the area was important for the colonial forces and they spent a large amount of time in Coimbatore city during the rule. India's alliance where Sufism has not only flourished in its true spirit, but has also become a way of integrating different religious communities. The Dargahs of Sufi saints have been acting as a bridge between different castes and religions for centuries. Today, we take you to one such Dargah in Aligarh city of Uttar Pradesh that has been bringing devotees of different communities under a single roof. An epicenter of faiths, a place where brotherhood and bonhomie between as many religions could be seen flourished and prospered at its best. The Dargah of Hazrat Shah Jamaluddin Shamsul Afri, situated in Aligarh city, is one such melange of diversities. Situated in Shah Jamal area of Aligarh city, the shrine witnesses a rush of devotees throughout the day. Whether one is Hindu, Muslim, Sikh or from any other community, the aroma of the shrine serenades them into cheerfulness and a belief of fulfillment ensues them. Hindu, Muslim, Sikh, Alhamdulillah, everyone और मैंने देखा यहां माशाल्लाह हमारे हिंदू भाई भी रुके हुए हैं जो काफी दिन से हैं और उन्हें अब आराम है फैज है और रुकते हैं जब काम उनका हो जाता है जब फैज मिल जाता है आराम हो जाता है तो चले जाते हैं यह रोजाना का आना जाना इस आस्थाने पर रहता है बुजुर्गों के दरबार में As in most of the temples or other religious sites the lighting of lamps and burning incense sticks is a common tradition among the devotees who come to pray and offer their obeisance at this dargah. Devotees from far and wide sing hymns and offer their prayers to the Sufi saint. It is believed that saint fulfills the wishes of all and nobody returns empty-handed from here. तमाम लोग अपनी अपनी मुरादें हिंदू मुसलमान सभी जाति के लोग आते हैं अपनी अपनी मुरादें लेकर आते हैं द दरगाह ऑफ हजरत शाह जमालुद्दीन शमसूल आफरीन इज अ परफेक्ट एग्जांपल ऑफ कम्युनल हार्मनी दैट इज विटनेस्ड थ्रू आउट द लेंथ एंड ब्रेथ ऑफ आवर कंट्री द सॉलिडारिटी अमंग द डिफरेंट रिलीजियस कम्युनिटीज हैज रिमेंड अ हॉलमार्क ऑफ इंडियाज यूनिटी सिंस टाइम इमेमोरियल Benjamin Franklin once said, an investment in knowledge pays the best interest. Authorities therefore keep on taking a number of steps to educate youngsters in India and turn them into a skilled and informed workforce. 
A similar yet innovative step was taken in Galaburgi district of Karnataka to provide easy access to education even in the most remote areas of the district. Education is a movement from darkness to light. Youngsters of a country should be provided with quality and timely education in order to turn them into informed and successful adults. In a similar effort to provide easy access to education to children in Karnataka, a mobile library has recently been rolled out by authorities in Galaburgi district. See, especially you can see, I think very remote areas, in, for example, Chincholi, Sedam, this kind of, uh, kind of taluks, it has gone. Uh, there the students are taking it as like a some kind of habit of reading, like, and they might have seen like such a huge number of books at one particular thing. Uh, like whether it is literature, whether it is children books, whether it is story books, whether it is some kind of magazines, uh, they are finding it like a very interesting thing and they are spending at, one, at least complete one day. This initiative is started by the Northeastern Karnataka Road Transport Corporation along with the Zela Panchayat, Education Department and Library Department of the district. The library has been set up in a bus with over 4,000 books and around 100 magazines inside it. Students are allowed to issue books and return them back when the bus visits to stop the next time. The step has been undertaken to encourage children, even in the most remote areas of the district, to inculcate the habit of reading. This unique initiative by the authorities is receiving an overwhelming response and is encouraging more children in the area to read books. The demand and the design is from education department, uh, mainly to reach out to the remote schools and uh, especially in the villages and then hamlets. Uh, and the uh, bus body, like we have taken a old body and the construction, everything is done from uh, Northeastern Corporation, uh, Road Transport Corporation. And the books were provided by uh, Jilla Panchayat Kalburgi and uh, library department. Now the bus is roaming in uh, different, different uh, interior villages and hamlets and tandas. Uh, we are getting a very good response from the schools and then students. It is due to initiatives like these that India is paving its way towards a more informed, bright and successful future by encouraging, educating and training its younger workforce. Next, we bring you a few short stories about the recent developments and happenings from around the world in our new edition, World in Focus. Sakai Kato has found his life's purpose in taking care of abandoned pets in a nearby empty township of Fukushima's restricted zone. Most steer clear of Fukushima's restricted zone in Japan. But for Sakai Kato, it's the place of his life's mission, taking care of his abandoned pets which he refers to as kids. There were some frustrations in the past 10 years that made me wonder why I was doing such things. But if humans have trouble making a living, the society will take care of them and provide them social aid. If these kids are in trouble and no one is taking care of them, they will die," said Kato. Kato vowed to stay on in a near-empty township and began taking care of stray pets. Kato and his 41 stray cats now live in a dilapidated house. Water is collected from a nearby mountain spring and Kato uses public toilets outside the restricted area. It's getting harder to take care of the animal, so I think it will be even much harder in 10 years' time. I want to be around when the last cat dies, then I want to die after that, no matter if it takes a day or an hour. I want to take care of the last cat here before I die, otherwise it would be cruel to leave it alone. I will not breed any more cats, but it's also sad to see them go, he wonders. Taking care of the animals eats up around 7,000 US dollars a month for food, fuel and veterinary expenses. Kato estimates he has spent at least 750,000 US dollars over the past 10 years looking after the pets. But his kindness has not always received a warm welcome from onlookers. Despite these obstacles, Kato insists he has permission to stay in the area 
and won't be deterred from what he sees as his life's purpose. The Toyota Yaris has been named the Car of the Year 2021 at a ceremony in Geneva. The fourth generation Yaris, a petrol electric hybrid, beat off the challenge from six other cars for the title. The announcement came on what should have been the eve of the Geneva International Motor Show, but for the second year running the event was cancelled due to coronavirus pandemic. The Toyota Yaris is one of the seven finalists for the car of the year 2021. I'm driving it on some typical Dutch B roads. They're twisty, they're narrow, they're bumpy, and therefore perfect to test the suspension of this fourth generation Yaris. It's more fun to drive, better steering, and more responsive handling. The strength is its versatility. Three body styles, different drivetrains, a lot of safety systems. So the total package is the reason why the Yaris is one of the seven finalists. Runner-up was the Fiat 500 electric with the Cupra Formentor crossover in third. A first-generation Yaris was named Car of the Year in 2000. Matthew Harrison, executive vice president of Toyota Europe, said it was a great honor for Toyota as it paid tribute to the work of the company's development teams in Europe and Japan. The Car of the Year Award is an independent organization supported by nine automotive publications from nine European countries. Jasiri, Suja and Tumaini only landed in Kenya just over two weeks ago, but they are already playing an important role in curbing the spread of the country's coronavirus epidemic. The three glossy white robots made in China are donated by Japan and the United Nations Development Program has been put to work at Nairobi's main international airport, keeping it disinfected and monitoring arrivals for signs of the virus. As Jasiri, a Swahili word meaning brave, does his rounds, he sprays fine jets of sanitizer from containers attached to his sides and takes infrared pictures with a camera mounted on an extendable neck while scanning hundreds of passengers per minute. Jasiri's role in this airport is to enhance the safety of international travel. And by that I mean its ability to one, take temperature, its ability to sanitize the environment around it and more importantly for us and for the entire country is the fact that it relays confidence in the safety of air travel. He takes their temperatures, records their data for storage and in tone flat English tells those not wearing masks to put them on and those standing too close to others to respect social distancing rules. Jasiri's role in this airport is to enhance the safety of international travel and by that I mean its ability to take temperature, its ability to sanitize the environment around it and more importantly for us and for the entire country is the fact that it relays confidence in the safety of air travel, said Airport Operations Manager Simon Peter Joregi. That's all we have for you this week. Your comments and suggestions are important to us. Do give us your feedback at myindia at ani.com. Now we'll leave you with the colorful visuals of a dance competition which was organized in Imphal city of Manipur. Goodbye and take care.